All right, hey everybody, Sean here, and today I have kind of a heavier topic that I wanted to talk about, and uh, the reason it came up is because I had an experience last night. Amy and I went out to a restaurant, uh, and we ended up leaving because there was a group of men, uh, probably I'd say young college-age guys, who were taking up a considerable amount of the restaurant and we ended up being seated near them and half of them were dressed up as women so wearing long hair wigs and dresses um, and we weren't exactly sure what was going on so I mean as you can see I'm wearing a pride shirt this weekend is pride weekend in Duluth Superior and we had just come from Bayfront Festival Park, where we had spent the entire day down there for the Pride Festival. Uh, I was manning a table for our Trans Plus group for most of the time, and then we were just hanging out with all of our friends and uh, enjoying Pride. So for us to go out to a restaurant in Duluth, after being at Pride all day, uh, and then to witness this just blatant transphobia. It was really, really hard to deal with. And we ended up leaving. We got our food to go. Uh, and I'm really glad that we did that. So today what I want to talk about is something called transphobia. And if you've never heard of this, um, this is a good video for you to watch. If you have heard of it, um, hopefully this will be a good refresher for you. Um, but transphobia is something that hits close to home for me because I am trans. Um, and so to see transphobic things happening, it's really, really hard on me and I would assume on a lot of other trans and gender non-conforming people out there too. So first things first, I want to start off with like a super basic definition of what transphobia is. And I just googled this and this is the definition that it came up with. So it says transphobia is a range of hateful attitudes and feelings against transgender people and gender non-conforming people based on the expression of their internal gender identity. And then as I read a little bit more, it says researchers describe transphobia as emotional disgust, fear, anger, or discomfort felt or expressed towards people who do not conform to society's gender expectations. So you may be wondering, what does that mean? Society's gender expectations? Well, that's the typical man and woman. Girls like pink, boys like blue, girls like dolls, boys like trucks. It's a very, very split black and white kind of uh, definition for people to fall under. And we've known for quite a while, and, and more and more people are learning now that not everybody fits into that clear-cut distinction. So when we talk about transphobia as being this disgust or fear or anger, it's people who don't take the time to learn or to understand or to hear someone else's story. They don't take the time to talk about those things. They just express that immediate disgust and revulsion for people who are trans, like me, right? So people who look a little bit different, they don't fit into their expectation of what a dude should look like, what a gal should look like, um, and it's just very, very binary and a terrible system to work off of. So to fit people into these two boxes it's crazy, right? So when people don't fit into those boxes, people lose their minds and they do terrible, horrible things 
that are really offensive to trans people and to gender non-conforming people. So next up, I wanted to give you a couple of examples of transphobia that you may or may not have heard of in the last couple of months uh, or year. The first one that I found um, is in regards to the Caitlyn Jenner Halloween costume. So you may remember Caitlyn Jenner came out as transgender and um, put it out there. I mean, was very out in the mainstream media. And then shortly after, Halloween came up and some terrible person thought it would be funny to create a Caitlyn Jenner Halloween costume. Um, there was a BuzzFeed article that came out shortly after uh, people started talking about this costume. And I wanted to quote a couple of things out of this article that I thought really put it in perspective. So one of the quotes from this BuzzFeed article says... To make a costume out of a marginalized identity reduces that person and that community to a stereotype for privileged people to abuse. Here's another quote from the BuzzFeed article. It says, At a time when trans women and gender nonconforming folks, especially black trans women, are being murdered at such a high rate, and homelessness, unemployment, and inaccessibility to health care are rampant in our community. Making fun of one or all of us is utterly insensitive and deplorable. So another really recent example of this transphobia that's happening is you may or may not have heard of Matt Bomer and Mark Ruffalo. They're two white male actors, pretty popular in Hollywood. And uh, they have found themselves in the crosshairs of a controversy related to transphobia because um, Mark Ruffalo is directing or producing, yeah, executive producing a movie with the main character who is a trans woman. And this character is being played by another white male, cis male actor, Matt Bomer. So you may have heard of this. Uh, there are a handful, quite a few uh, trans women actresses who are basically calling this out and saying, why are you having cis men play trans women in movies, in TV shows, whatever it is? There are plenty of trans actors and actresses out there who can actually play that role and it can be accurate and authentic. Here's a quote that I read recently about this uh, whole Matt Bomer thing, and the quote says, The decision to put yet another man in a dress to portray a transgender woman touches a nerve for transgender people, and rightfully so. It's yet another painful reminder that in the eyes of so many people, so many people in our country, in the world, in my neighborhood, so many people believe that transgender women are really just men. Okay, so you have a man playing a trans character. Underneath it all, that guy is he's a man. He's not a trans woman. He's he's not portraying that right. And he could never do that because he's not trans. So the whole idea of respecting the trans community and wanting to educate and have more movies out there with trans characters, that's great. But have trans actors play them. So if you stuck with me this far, some of you may be wondering, why am I doing a video about this? Why do we care about transphobia? Doesn't everybody get picked on and bullied and all of that? Yeah, lots of people get bullied. Lots of people... Um, are called names or are made fun of, but if we look at a couple statistics from and regarding our trans community, 
uh, we begin to see why this is not okay. So since August of 2013, over 50 trans women have been murdered in the U.S. And that number, 50, that's just the murders that we know about. Another stat for you, trans people are four times more likely to live in poverty. Trans people experience unemployment at twice the rate of the general population. 90% of trans people report experiencing harassment, mistreatment, or discrimination on the job, if they have jobs. 22% have interacted with police uh, that say they've been harassed by the police, with much higher rates reported by people of color. 41% reported attempting suicide, compared to 1.6% of the general population. So why does transphobia matter? Because it's killing people. It's a terrible thing. So for Amy and I to go into that restaurant and see 40-ish, I don't know, dudes, half of them dressed up as ladies, um, and just kind of making fun of it and making it into this joke, um, it's not acceptable, it's not okay, and it hurts and kills trans people. So hopefully this has been a little bit helpful. Um, like I said, you can Google transphobia, you can read some of this stuff yourself, do your own research, and if you know a trans person, get to know them. Don't just write them off as some weirdo that, you know, they just don't fit into your idea of what a man or a woman should be. That's not up to you. Let's all try to be kind to one another and learn and grow and love, not hate.